We now move on to the knee joint where we'll describe the knee joint, including its osteology ligaments and its movements. So the knee joint is also a synovial joint. It's considered a hinge joint or a bicondylar joint. The two articulating surfaces are the femoral condyles that articulate with the tibial condyles. Together they make this hinge joint. It's called a bicondylar joint because we have two femoral condyles articulating with two tibial condyles. Uh, primarily given as hinge joint movement, so uh, bending in only one plane, but we'll see that it gives some rotational movements later on, uh, hence bicondylar joint. Now the ligaments, uh, there's some, uh, a lot of support to help with this knee joint. We've got two cruciate ligaments, we've got two collaterals, and we have two menisci. The first is the anterior cruciate ligament we'll talk about. It arises from the anterior surface of the tibia, and then it inserts on the uh, posterior part of the distal femur. Uh, we also have the posterior cruciate ligament that arises from the posterior part of the tibia and inserts more ventrally on the femur. So the cruciates get their names for their the part of the tibia they arise from. The ACL arises from the front of the tibia, the PCL arises from the back of the tibia. And you'll notice that if we put them both together, they make a cross, hence the name cruciate, which means cross, anterior and posterior ligaments that make an X or a cross within the center of the knee joint. Now the functions of both of these ligaments can best be demonstrated in this lateral view of the femur, tibia, and you can see the patella that shows the front of the knee joint. Now this anterior cruciate ligament, it restricts anterior displacement of the tibia on the femur, sometimes said as restricts anterior translation of the tibia on the femur in this fashion. When we see the femur moves forward, notice that the ACL becomes taut, tight, helping to restrict that forward movement of the tibia. In contrast, the PCL restricts posterior displacement of the tibia on the femur in this fashion. When the tibia wants to move back, the uh, PCL helps restrict that movement. Hence, anterior posterior cruciate ligaments help with restricting anterior and posterior translation of the tibia on the femur. Now, our two collaterals are Lateral collateral ligaments arise from the lateral epicondyle of the femur and goes to the head of the fibula. And this ligament, um, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Then there's the medial collateral ligament that comes from the medial epicondyle of the femur and goes to the medial proximal tibia. And so the functions of these are best illustrated in these pictures. So that lateral collateral ligament prevents varus or varus forces on the knee joint. So what that means is lateral bending or bending of the knee joint towards the wall. That's a varus force. And what this lateral collateral ligament does is help prevent uh, that lateral bending of the knee when a varus force is applied to it. Then, in contrast, that medial collateral ligament prevents valgus forces on the knee joint, which is forces that will bend the knee more medially towards the midline of the body. So the MCL prevents um, medial bending of the knee joint when a valgus force is applied. And then our menisci. These are fibrous cartilage or fibrocartilage wedges that are found within this knee joint. The medial meniscus is illustrated there in purple, and then the lateral meniscus as well. And these menisci help with absorption of shock and help keep the femoral condyles on the tibia when the knee is bending. So the movements of this knee joint are extension, flexion, and then we'll discuss this rotation. So extension is straightening the knee so that the knee becomes straight. Uh, the primary muscles that will do this are our four quadriceps muscles. They're the primary extenders of the knee joint. And then flexion of the knee joint is primarily from our hamstrings, uh, semimembranosus, tendinosus, and biceps femoris, and you get a little bit from that gastrocnemius muscle as well. And then our rotational movement, so this is one that is a little less, uh, it's a little more subtle in, in noticing it, that when you are standing and your knees are bent, when you stand up and you straighten, your knees lock. And that helps reduce the amount of energy expenditure your muscles require to keep, um, uh, to keep standing. So whenever you bend and completely straighten your knees while standing, your uh, knee joint rotates just a bit, enough to lock your knee. 
and then that will enable you to reduce the amount of energy your quads and hamstrings uh, would require to stand up straight. And the popliteus muscle, when it contracts, helps to unlock or unrotate that knee joint. Um, by doing this, you put a lot, you put more tension on that uh, fascia that's on the back of the popliteal fossa, which then can help put pressure on the popliteal vein, pre possibly preventing return of blood. And that's why some people who stand long at attention for long periods of time can sometimes become faint because of that pressure on the back of the popliteal vein.